Hi guys, it's Alex from Online Teachers UK again here. Um, today we're going to be talking about British slang. Uh, you have to be careful because it is often different from American slang that you may be familiar with from, say, Hollywood films, music, and so on. Um, here I'm going to be comparing English with Russian. Uh, I know Russian slang quite well because I lived there for many years. Um, so let's take, say, ten of, of the most popular English slang expressions that we use here in the UK. Uh, and compare those with Russian. Um, the first one I want to look at is mate. So this is a word that we use in Britain to refer to a friend. Uh, it might not be a close friend. I've translated it here as druk, uh, but it, it could be someone who is close to you, or it could be someone who's just uh, znakomly, or just someone that you know, uh, an acquaintance. Um, it could also be used in quite an informal situation to talk about, uh, say, <coughs> Joak or Bratan in Russian. Um, this is in some ways the equivalent English, British English word for dude in American English. We don't really use that in the UK unless it's, we're being ironic. So uh, <coughs> it's not a particularly popular word. We do have Americanisms here too. So as I said, sometimes we do use dude, but only in an ironic sense. And sometimes we use buddy or bud. Uh, but again, that's uh, from American English. So this is just a, a British English word. I don't think that they do use this in the States. Uh, the second one is cheers. A very good word to learn in British English because it's so universal. Um, so it can mean spasiva. So you can say, if you get off the bus, you can say, cheers mate, and you're thanking the bus driver. So we never say something like, thank you my friend. That sounds very foreign. But we'd say, cheers mate, uh, to the bus driver. It's a very common thing to say here. Uh, cheers can also be our toast. British people don't really do toast like you do in Russia. Um, but we could say, it translates something like, but you don't really say that anymore. You say something like, um, so that would be our <clears throat> simple English toast, cheers. We can also use cheers to mean, see you later, bye. Um, so I translate it here as, paka, or just, uh, <clears throat> number three is bird. Uh, we would never say this to a woman's face. Uh, it's quite insulting. Um, so in Russian, this would translate as either baba tyolka. Uh, in American English, this would be chick. And I think that now in Russian, you probably have that transliterated into your language, uh, borrowed from American slang. Uh, number four is a verb here, to fancy. This is quite an interesting one. Um, so we, we often use this instead of the, word, the verb want. So I wouldn't say, do you want a cup of tea? I would probably use another slang word, kappa, which means a cup of tea. So instead of saying, would you like or do you want a cup of tea, uh, in, in, Brit in Britain we would probably say, do you fancy a cuppa? Or do you fancy a pint after work today? Something like that. Uh, fancy literally does mean to want or to desire, so that's why it can also mean nrarica in the sense of a romantic connection, or you're sexually attracted to someone. So you could say, um, I don't know, I really fancy that new girl at school, or I fancy my colleague at work, right? Um, dodgy is another good English word. Uh, I translate this as something like lievi prestupni, mutni, so you can say, he's a dodgy guy, and saying he's a dodgy guy means um, he might be a little bit criminal, right? Maybe you can't trust him, so it has the association with nichiestni, um, mutni, maybe you're not quite sure what his uh, motives are, perhaps. We could also say a dodgy neighborhood, so that's one where you don't really want to go at night, it's quite dangerous, you might uh, get beaten up or, or mugged. Um, you could equally use it about a pen or any kind of piece of technology. So you could say this, this pen's a bit dodgy, it's not, it's not writing, to mean that it's not working properly, that it might be kind of fake, uh, that it's not particularly good quality. So that's a, that's a good English word to learn. Uh, number six is gutted. Uh, if you know the word, it helps to learn the roots of words. So the root of this one is gut. Gut is kishka. And I think it probably comes from the process of gutting a fish, 
So if you catch a fish, and you, in Russian you would just say to, I think you say to clean the fish, right? Um, it means the process of literally taking out, it's not a very nice process, taking out the guts of the fish. Uh, in British English slang, we would say gutted to mean very disappointed, like a very, very high level of disappointment. So here I translated it in, in that way. Um, so I could say, um, how, did, how did the football match go yesterday? Uh, did you win? Um, and you could say, no, we lost 5-0. And I was absolutely gutted. I was destroyed, you know, like emotionally I was torn up, right? So it has the association with the, the guts being taken out. I, I was empty after that. I was so disappointed. So that's quite a common one that we use in, <coughs> in Britain. Uh, number seven is knackered. Uh, another good British English slang expression to mean very tired uh, is mottenly. Um, I think that you do have maybe dirtier expressions in Russian like ustal v, and then some, some words that I'm not going to mention. Um, so yeah, that just means you're very, very tired. Um, number eight, to crash a tab or to crash a ciggy off someone means to borrow a cigarette from them, but most likely you won't give it back. I mean, you just uh, get a cigarette from someone. So if you, if you need to steal a cigarette, you can say, can I crash a tab or can I crash a ciggy off you? Um, this type of slang will vary depending on which part of the UK you're in. So if you're in London, the slang may be, may be different from how it is where, where I am in Sheffield in the north. Uh, number nine, to take the piss out of someone. Um, this isn't particularly rude, but obviously you're not going to say it to your, to your grandma. Um, you can say to take the mickey. I don't know where this comes from exactly. It might be copying rhyming slang. Um, to take the mickey out of someone, or to make fun of. So to make fun of is what you'll find in dictionary, it's not slang. Uh, but to take the mickey or take the piss out of someone is divatsa, uh, is divatsa, uh, not uh, And the final one, number 10, is a funny one that we use in the north of England. So if you're surprised at what someone else has said, uh, you can express this by saying, you what? You what? Uh, and I like this in Russian as well. So obviously you have shto, uh, but uh, in, in slang you would say something like, that did you or chivo, so that, that's a funny one that equates in both languages, you can see this, the similarity there. Uh, but, but slang, I think, is a very important part of the language, especially if you watch our films, if you watch, say, Guy Ritchie films or other, other interesting English, uh, <coughs> English films. Um, but also, in, in terms of just understanding modern culture, how British people communicate on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you go to Russia, obviously people don't speak like Pushkin or like in, in the textbooks, right? Uh, you have your own more relaxed way of speaking, and that's exactly the same in the UK. So I, I think that well, I would say don't speak with this all the time. Uh, if you can master some slang words, it will really help with your understanding when you come over to the UK or when you watch our films, listen to our music and so on. Okay, so that's British Slang Part 1. Uh, I'll be producing more videos on this subject soon. Uh, don't forget to check out our website, onlineteachersuk.com, uh, and I'll see you very soon.